How about that? That's better. Hey, good morning to you. Welcome. Uh, glad that you are here. Apologies for being a few minutes late. Was unavoidably delayed before we got here, but I promise that it's going to be better. So uh, when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, do as Joe has already done. Click on uh, that thumbs up and give, leave me a comment. Say hello, good morning. Let me know that you're here while I get a sip of coffee. <clears throat> there must be something new blooming in the air because it's all back in here this morning. But hey, we're going to make it. We're going to get through. And listen, if you happen to be catching the show on your favorite podcast catcher, iTunes, Stitcher, Tune in, whatever the case may be. Head over to seven minutes in the morning.com. Join us on Facebook so you can join in the conversation as well. This morning, I want to talk about being an opener of doors. This comes from a, uh, a quote out of my vast and extensive database of quotes. Uh, and this one is a, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, I believe. Be an opener of doors. What does that mean? Well, very often, we catch ourselves saying, well, now nah, that door, that opportunity is closed, so I need to take a pass on that one. Well, I mean, okay, sometimes that's true, but is the door locked? You know, Randy Posh in his magnificent, magnificent book and video called The Last Lecture, one of the things that he said is the brick walls are not there to keep you out. They're there to make you prove how badly you want it. The door is not there to keep you out. It's there to make sure that you'll turn the knob and open it. I mean, so now, now to make you feel a little bit bad, think about how many times you might have passed on an opportunity that was right there. You just didn't open the door. Oh, man. Reach out there and turn that knob. But look, here's the other thing. Yes, we need to be an opener of doors for opportunities for ourselves. Remember, an opportunity, just a set of circumstances, right? And we can change those circumstances by opening the door. And what does that look like in real life? Answering the phone call, calling somebody back. I was in this conversation on Friday. The bar is so ridiculously low now that if you just call people back, You'll put yourself ahead of 70% of the competition. <sighs> uh, take that class. Uh, speak to that group. Do the things that that are challenging for you. I'm going to have to do, um, I'll, I'll do a show on the challenge curve. Maybe I'll do it this week. I don't know. We'll see. But look, don't just be an opener of doors for yourself. No, no, no. Also, be an opener of doors for other people. Hmm. Now, what does that mean? What does that entail? Well, create, again, opportunity is just a set of circumstances, right? Create the circumstances for other people so that they can be successful. Now, when you do that, um, you become a resource for other people. And when you become a resource for other people, what does that make you? Hmm, what could it be? Yes, more valuable, right? If you are an employee, open doors for your boss. Not physical doors. Don't run ahead of them and yank the door open like a doorman. Create opportunities. Create circumstances. Because, look, from a purely selfish point of view, Maybe if you help your boss succeed and they get promoted, that leaves room for you. <laughs> if you're a business owner, man, this, this is even easier. Even easier, right? Create circumstances for your clients to be successful. I, I mean, I'm fairly intentional about this. And I, even though I feel like I'm intentional, I also feel I could be better. I try diligently to connect people that I know. Put, I mean, looking for a job. Okay, here's somebody that helps people find jobs. Looking for a particular type of person. Here's somebody that does recruiting. Got a question about accounting. Here's an accountant I know. I mean, connect people. Open doors. Become a resource. Now, here's the caution. All you can do 
is open the door. It's not airborne school. You can't shove them through the door. All you can do is open it. All right? I tell people all the time, my pleasure to make an email introduction or face-to-face for that matter. My pleasure to do that. After that, it's up to you. All right? You don't follow up. You don't make a phone call. You don't reply to that email. Not up to me. And, and, and what happens a lot of the time, if we're not careful, we will open those doors with an expectation of a result. You guys would be perfect to work together. You make the introduction, then nothing happens. Then what happens? Because of expectations, right? Remember, frustration is a function of expectations because you set, you projected this expectation on them. Now you're frustrated because they're not living up to that expectation. All you can do, parents, you know this, all you can do is open the door. If they choose to go through it, awesome. If they choose to not go through it, their choice. Now, is it, how long do you keep opening doors? If the people you open doors for are choosing to not go through them. Well, I would say, well, there's two answers to this. Until there are no more doors or until it creates a problem for you. Ultimately, you, you leverage. Yeah. Ultimately, you you are leveraging a bit of your personal capital when you make those introductions. And if you if I introduced a hundred people to somebody and not one of them followed up, this person I've been inundating with these losers is going to begin to associate me with a bunch of losers. So there is some risk associated with doing that. And at some point, you have to cut that off and say, look, I now have to protect myself, my my capital in the marketplace. I can't continue to do this, right? But if you surround yourself with good people and those are the people that you're introducing, that's not going to be a problem. Joe says, don't become disappointed when introductions are wasted on individuals that lack execution. I agree with that. Don't be disappointed. Don't project that expectation, Right. But again, if you surround yourself with higher quality folks, that won't be the problem. Those that take advantage. This is also from Joe. Those that take advantage are the core of who you respect and continue to work with. Absolutely. That's the, uh, over time. This is how you build and vet that close network of people that you work with. Right. It's the people that take advantage of those opportunities. All right. So. As we depart today, what door can you open for yourself and for someone else? Be an opener of doors. That's it for today. I'll be back again in the morning, bright and early, 7 o'clock, with another, yet another, brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Until then, you guys have a magnificent Monday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.